From installation infrastructure to aviation operations, Energy provides the Air Force with the power it needs to perform. Energy impacts all Air Force missions, operations, and organizations, such as the Air National Guard. I'm most proud of the way that the community, meaning the base engineers, the facility managers, the headquarters staff, all have come together and embraced the concept of we need to reduce facility energy and the way we've gone about it. It's a daunting task considering the size of the Guard. More than 100 locations, 49 million square feet. In 2011, the Guard spent more than $64 million on utilities. The Air Force's Infrastructure Energy Plan focuses on three key areas, improving current and future infrastructure, adding renewable energy, and managing costs. There are hundreds of ways to improve infrastructure and increase energy efficiency. Burlington, Vermont incorporated many examples into a new fire station, which uses geothermal energy in the form of ground source heat pumps. The fire station has a number of good energy uh, saving products in it uh, that we'd like to talk about. Um, one is the infrared heat. Um, it's an excellent way to um, heat a space. And another one is the, the unit heaters. The hydronic unit heaters are, are fed off of the, the geothermal system. Um, a couple other products are the T5 uh, low bay lights with the integrated motion sensors. You know, when, we, when we're done here, the lights will go off automatically and, and make sure they're not left on. And, and the last thing is the destratification fans. There's four air pair destratification fans in here, which push the heat back down in the wintertime. Carbon monoxide sensors are used in buildings throughout the guard to save energy. They're common in buildings such as vehicle maintenance shops. Occupancy sensors also help reduce energy. Installed in 257 rooms of lodging at Volt Field in Camp Douglas, Wisconsin, these sensors adjust and maintain each room's temperature based on occupancy. Savings from digital control systems, new lighting systems, boilers, and chillers combine to make a significant reduction impact. Birmingham-based civil engineer Major Scott Vandenberg works closely with technicians to monitor heating and cooling equipment across the base with this direct digital control system. They determine whether a space is being overcooled or overheated and can often make adjustments without even going to the building. This new chiller cools Birmingham's intelligence building. It's a multiple compressor, variable speed unit that provides efficient operations over a wide range of loads. It's able to meet low load conditions by operating only one compressor and boasts low water consumption and no scale problems due to its advanced design. Individual facility boilers are a new concept for places like Toledo and Pease where they've decentralized their heat plants. For Pease, this means 10,000 feet of hot water distribution lines no longer leak up to 40% of the heat produced at a central plant. And we'd have occasions in the winter where you could actually see green grass uh, where all the snow was melted um, due to the, uh, the wasted heat. With this distribution system, uh, we could lose as much as 40% of the heat re we create at the central plant. Um, so by eliminating this, and having individual boilers, we should see a substantial amount of uh, savings. Engineers completed the project in 2011 and expect to save at least $300,000 a year. Another showcase project at Pease is the renovation of three hangars. Here's a before and after comparison. New insulation and a complete lighting retrofit with digital controls and daylight sensors make this a more energy efficient building and a better work environment. The addition of new light fixtures and systems to control them provide great energy saving opportunities. At Toledo, LED lights are wired into a light management system. Under the old photo cell, these 900 watt, two 900 watt light fixtures ran all night long. Now I've got two 300 watt light fixtures only running during the hours that we need them. Aircraft security is critical on Air National Guard installations. Typically, high-intensity metal halides or high-pressure sodium lights are needed to spread an appropriate amount of light across the apron where planes park. However, the Wyoming Air National Guard at Cheyenne recently replaced its conventional 1,000-watt ballast and lamps with 400-watt electronic ballast and lamps, 
resulting in an energy savings of 70%. Another lighting retrofit at Cheyenne involved the replacement of mercury vapor lights with induction fixtures. The lighting quality is improved, energy is saved, and with rebates, the return on investment is just three years. Congress is interested in demonstration projects and we've been the benefit of some congressional insert to try and advance some exploratory type activity. Uh, uh, Toledo, you know, photovoltaic uh, array for a small base is a case of that. You know. Toledo's 1.2 megawatt solar array provides 34 percent of the base's electrical needs. Engineers conducted an extensive evaluation of available technology to make sure the solar panels chosen would work well with Ohio environmental conditions. A research and development grant at Burlington produced a similar solar field along with roof-mounted panels and a dual-access ground-mounted array. While the PV array is, is noticeable and sexy, I'm more excited about what we're doing below ground with the geothermal. We have our first geothermal system for the fire station. Uh, we have another one planned for a new security forces building. The geothermal uh, in New England is, 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 a, is a great way to go. While finding the appropriate amount of land for a renewable energy project at a small guard base is difficult, most locations are able to invest in solar hot water systems. For example, there are 18 rooftop systems at Pease. There are many ways to manage cost. Depending on their location, some bases have a six-week shouldering period between seasons a time when neither the heat nor air conditioning is turned on. Birmingham takes it a step further and conserves resources by following a four-day work week. Sustainability, pursuit of sustainability in a declining resource world is going to be a challenge. Now, we shouldn't shy away from that and we shouldn't just throw up our hands and say because we got no money we're, you know, we're not going to do things. You know, we, we need to adapt the practices of what we're doing and try and do them to the best of our ability. Um, regardless of the funding streams. Every Guardsman can help by taking action. Action stands for appliance reduction, computer log off, temperature set points, inform facility managers, outdoor conservation, and no waste. Do you have a refrigerator or coffee maker in your work area? Many personal appliances can be removed or consolidated in break rooms. Log off computers to ensure they enter energy-saving sleep modes. Be aware of temperature set points. Most bases use 68 degrees in the winter and 76 degrees in the summer. Report incorrect temperature set points, leaky faucets, blocked air vents, cracked windows, and other problems to your facility manager. If you notice a broken sprinkler head wasting water, or area lights left on in parking lots during the day, report it to civil engineering. Infrastructure improvements, renewable energy, cost management, and simple conservation actions have helped the Air National Guard reduce energy more than 20% since 2003. We've exceeded what we're supposed to do, and, and that's not magic, it's not that we spent more money, it's just that this whole idea has, has really meant something to the Guard. The Guard, the states, the bases have all glommed onto it and said, this is the right thing to do. We're going to go out there and achieve this.